we have we we read it and when we read it we feel it and down throughout the centuries uh since the history of the church you know throughout the history of the church since the inception of the church um you know we we've we've argued it <laughs> and gone back and forth um but you know when you read the scriptures you will see for instance when it comes to this issue of the sovereignty of god and the free will of man um, you know, there's Christians on both sides of that very strong, but here's the point, you know, does the Bible teach um, that God chooses us and that he chooses us before the foundation of the world and that, and, and that um, you know, it, it's through his sovereign act that we're saved, um, that it takes the Holy Spirit uh, convicting us and drawing us to, to God or we would never come to him? Yes, that's true. But then at the same time, the Bible also makes it very clear that God in his sovereignty has given to us the freedom to choose and has given us free will. Uh, that's why we have all those I wills in the New Testament, uh, or I'm sorry, the whosoever wills in the New Testament, um, where, you know, whosoever can come and drink of the water of life freely, uh, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Um, so there's this tension uh, between the sovereignty of God and the free will of man. Well, which one's right? They're both right. They're both correct. And they can be both correct at the same time. The problem is a lot of times we see these, this tension and we think we have to choose. Uh, there's also scriptures that do speak very clearly. And, and Joey, these are the ones that you're bringing up right now, the ones that, that speak very clearly of the assurance of the security of the believer. And I, you know what? They're in the scripture and they're true. And I thank God that they're true. But at the same time, there are also plenty of New Testament scriptures that talk about the responsibility of the believer. Once he has truly received salvation, then here is his responsibility as a child of God uh, in living in this world. And, and with those responsibilities comes, again, through our free will, that ability that if we choose not to follow the Lord, you know what? We can walk away from our salvation. As Mike said, I do not believe one in one iota that, that we just lose our salvation. But I do believe that through our own neglect uh, of our relationship with the Lord, through neglecting to abide in Christ on a daily basis, through loving the world, uh, there's so many things that can come in and steal our love for Jesus to where we don't even want to walk with him in, anymore. And if we don't want to walk with him on earth, then he's not going to make us go to heaven. It's very plain. So there's a lot of scriptures that speak of the responsibility of the believer. In fact, there in Jude, chapter, you know, of course, there's only one chapter, right? But there in Jude, in verse 21, right before uh, you, what you quoted in verse 24, uh, let me give it to you from verse 20. Here's what it says. It says, but you, beloved, it says, building up yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. And then it says this in verse 21, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto, unto eternal life. Keep ourselves in the love of God. What that means is to keep ourselves in that place where we are, we are under the only covering that can save us. And, and, and that, that is talking about abiding in Christ and, and, and staying in the Lord, remaining in him once we've come to him. Uh, and that is our responsibility. When those words there, keep yourselves, that's an imperative. That's, that is actually a command that Jude is giving believers he's writing to. And in, in the Bible, when there's an imperative like that, to not do it is a sin. So, you know, we have to understand, you know, before coming, uh, before verse 24 comes, now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and present you faultless, okay, that's all true. But before that, it's, hey, keep yourselves in the love of God. And you see this sort of thing all through the New Testament. Um, I will leave you with one other scripture that I just think is interesting. There was one ministry partner that Paul had by the name of Demas. And, uh, you know, he, he, he worked and served with the early church and, and worked with Paul. But in 2 Timothy 4.10, Paul actually said this. He said, for Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present world. Now, here's what's interesting. When you go over to uh, 1 John chapter 2, John says to love not the world, neither the things in the world, because if any man loves the world, then the love of the Father is not in him. Demas lost his love for God, 
and was shipwrecked in his faith because he allowed his love for the world to replace his love for God. And uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a warning to us as believers uh, that, that we can, instead of keeping ourselves in the love of God, we can remove ourselves from the love of God. Again, just as Mike said, no external force is going to do it. Paul made that clear in Romans 8. There's nothing that can separate us from the love of God, you know, when it comes to external forces, but we still have that free will to do what we want to do. And, uh, you know, if we don't watch over our hearts and watch over our relationship with the Lord, uh, it can happen very easily. And uh, I've seen it personally in my years of being a Christian and being a pastor. I've seen it many, many times. Pastor Mike. Hope that helps here. It does. I have one more question, though, sure. on that same thing. Um, does it not also say that once you are walk, do you walk with God and you walk away, it's impossible for you to come back because it's like, crucifying Christ all over again? Well, I believe, dear, that everybody in their course of a lifetime in their relationship with Christ have gotten their feelings hurt. God didn't, I prayed and God didn't do it my way and I'm mad at God. And then, you know, the Holy Spirit works on us. And it's, well, I, I, we're not talking about that. I, I believe what we're talking about in, in is where a person who knows God over a period of, of, of a lifetime, I don't believe this is something that just happens overnight. I, mean, I believe this is where the Holy Spirit working with a person refuses that call to repent and dies in their sin. I believe that's a very serious place to be. Again, the prodigal son, if he died in the pigsty, he'd still be in the pigsty. It's only when he decided to come back to his father was he restored. The father, uh, I believe, it says, look for him a long way off. It says he saw him a long way off. That tells me he was looking for him. And he was prepared for him when he came home because he had a robe and a ring and shoes for his feet. He came home and his fruit of the looms. He was, he was destitute, but he came home. That's what I'm saying. For anyone, don't die in the pigsty. That is so important, I believe. Jesus, again, in 